Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Maria Sirwa, and I'm here to talk to you this afternoon a bit about resilience. In a time of great difficulty, the first question that always comes to mind is how am I or how are we going to get through this? And from the perspective of resilience, the question we want to be holding is how are we going to get through this with a sense of health, well-being, inner strength, and capacity? And yet, when we look ahead, when we imagine two, three, four years from now, an even larger question is possible. The question that we might want to hold as a kind of North Star question is, how might we make this a year worth having lived through? How we might we make this an experience worth having gone through? You see, resilience is not just about bouncing back to our capacity. That was an old understanding. Through the lens of positive psychology, we've come to understand that most of us, when given the chance, actually grow through adversity. We become stronger. So the model of resilience actually looks much more like this, where we're going along in life and something very difficult happens. And with time and help, we actually emerge more expansive larger within ourselves, wiser, and with a greater sense of inner strength and control. How is this possible? I'm going to offer you just a few hints in this conversation about how we might bounce forward into a place of greater strength. The first has to do with holding a certain perspective, the perspective that in positive psychology we call that of true hope or grounded optimism. And it is rooted in facing reality. First, giving ourselves permission to face the most difficult realities. What's fallen apart, what is no longer true, what is difficult. And then integrating in a beautiful and. You see, if we only face the reality of that which is difficult, we often become anxious, frightened, angry, fearful, worried, ruminative, pessimistic, etc. Resilient folk we know face reality and they build in this beautiful and to another understanding, the reality of that which is good within us and around us. We focus on the positives, we seek to savor the good and elevate it. We, we learn to prioritize building in moments of positivity in our work. And by positivity, I don't just mean happiness. I mean, hey, yes, happiness and contentment and delight and peacefulness and awe and wonder and meaning. So we wanna hold an integrated perspective because here's what we know to be true about the most resilient of us. We live in an understanding that we are capable of facing distress and growing at the same time. We are imperfect, fractured, flawed, and astonishingly generous and generative. We can be frightened and brave. We can be worried and kind. We have capacity that can be sustaining even in the presence of the worst moments. So this overarching perspective of holding multiple realities at the same time is essential. I know that for any one of you watching this, You've had difficult moments in this day, whatever the day is. Th there, things have been stressful. And if you shift your lens, you'll be aware that there have been things that you are grateful for. The house, the roof, the food on your table, companionship, an opportunity to learn and grow. Both realities are always true. We also know that the most resilient of us leverage our character strengths. Character strengths are those qualities that are true to who we are. They are authentic. They, they emerge from our core sense of self and they, they hold us steady in the most difficult times and they point us forward with a kind of clarity about how we might show up. Our character strengths are things like compassion or generosity or perspective or judgment or wisdom or social intelligence or fairness or um, love of learning, appreciation of beauty and excellence. We are an astonishing treasure trove of wonder and goodness. And the most resilient of us lead 
from our character strengths. We literally bring to mind a stressor, a difficulty, or an opportunity that's upcoming, and we ask ourselves, which strengths will most benefit me in this moment? Which strengths are the most life-giving? So imagine working with a particularly distressed student and asking yourself, what strengths will help me show up at my best in that conversation? Imagine working with an angry colleague or an angry parent. What strengths will enable me to move forward the conversation with that parent or that colleague? Resilient folk take the time to become mindful about their character strengths and use them in moments of stress and opportunity. We know from the research that those of us who lead from our character strengths experience greater optimism, clarity, engagement at work and at home. Over time, life satisfaction and work satisfaction increases and performance, accomplishment all grow. Another thing the most resilient of us do, we cultivate positive connections. We all know intuitively that having um, relationships that are sustaining and nourishing makes a positive difference. We, we've known this in the field of psychology for over 100 years. And now we know that even in the worst moments, knowing that there is one positive connection out there for us makes a profound difference. At work, we can cultivate these connections through the pathway of mentors to actually lean or ask for mentorship. We can build one-to-one -one conversation, those you know, coffee break moments that we used to have, right? Those coffee break conversations in which you can put your feet up and really inquire, how are you doing really? We know that we can cultivate high quality connections by building moments of collaboration and opportunity for each other, creating teams of like-hearted, like-minded people to work on a, a project of, of import, of meaning. We can also lean on those we deeply trust, those who love us, admire us, and respect us. Each of these avenues of connection is available to us at all times. Resilient folk know that no one does this life thing well alone. It is up to each of us to find a way to leverage the connections that are available to us and create new connections when possible so that we have shared wisdom, shared caring, shared creativity, shared data, and a shared sense of being in community while growing. A third thing resilient folk do, especially when things are quite dark, is we lean into meaning. Meaning is that sense of purpose that we have in life, the why of why we get up in the morning. For each of you, I'm sure there is a unique why. And there was a sense of purpose when you decided to take on the job that you've taken on or show up in life the way you've chosen to show up. A sense of clarity, your, your north, north Star, and infusing or re-infusing our days with that clear sense of meaning is invigorating. It also enables us to endure resilient folk persevere in the presence of continuous obstacles. And in order to develop that capacity to persevere over time, meaning helps. Having a sense of purpose informs our mattering, our sense of significance. Now here's what's interesting about meaning. It doesn't have to be huge. In fact, investing in ordinary meaning is tremendously helpful. So while we might not be able to improve the well-being of every student in front of us or every colleague next to us or every person in our community, we can absolutely focus on one person, one moment, one day at a time. The last thing I want to bring to you is so important at this time. We are in a time of shifting uncertainty and lack of control. Those are the two primary drivers of stress. We have been under stress as a global community for over a year now. And uncertainty and lack of control are going to continue as we re-emerge, re-enter the world again, return to school, return to work, 
Will the vaccinations work? Who's been vaccinated? Do they last? All of these questions that are still big question marks. The last element I want to bring to your attention is that resilient folk in the presence of uncertainty and lack of control absolutely focus on recovery and self-care. We consider that other people matter and we matter as well. We build in small moments of time throughout the day in which we consciously choose to do something that either inspires us or calms us down or strengthens us. In fact, I often ask the students in my classes to consider every morning asking yourself, what might I do today to inspire myself, strengthen myself, or calm myself? Choose one question, come up with one answer, and practice that. Resilience, you see, is an inside job. It is cultivated through the choices we make, the actions we take, and the perspectives we hold. At any moment, we can elevate our resilience. No matter how harsh this year has been, no matter how overwhelming, no matter how heavy your heart or how burdened your mind, your resilience can be strengthened today. Leverage your strengths. Remember to invest in positive connections. Elevate meaning by attending to what your sense of purpose is again. What gives you that sense of mattering in any one ordinary day? And build in just a moment of time every day to care for yourselves. Human beings are astonishing. We have gone through so much together throughout our histories and will face more difficult times to come. And yet, and yet, we can fall apart and grow. We can face our vulnerability, our fear, our anxiety, and be brave and generous and generative. We can experience what it is like to be both broken and whole and continue to shape our days such that we feel stronger, clearer, calmer, and wiser. Thank you so much. <laughs>